Most if not all political parties in India look like family run enterprises. Congress gets panned for it quite often and quite deservedly, but other parties are guilty of nepotism as well. And this election, let me tell you a tale of two privileged sons in Indian politics. One of them has got a ticket, the other hasn't. The first is Karthi Chidambaram, son of former finance minister and Congress veteran P. Chidambaram. He will contest from Sivaganga constituency in Tamil Nadu. Now this has sparked a furor, both inside the Congress and outside. It should not. After all, every senior Congress leader leaves the throne for his or her kin. It's the Congress game of thrones. But in Karthi's case, it's not just nepotism and dynasty, there's corruption in the mix as well. He's been charged in the INX media case. The CBI and the Enforcement Directorate have both sought custodial interrogation of his father P. Chidambaram as well, a former minister. So what are the allegations against Karthi Chidambaram? In a nutshell, he's said to have taken money from INX media and manipulated a tax probe against the company by flouting rules. The CBI and the Enforcement Directorate say that he did this to get investments from Mauritius. There are also graft charges against him. The CBI says Karthi Chidambaram received kickbacks for favouring INX media. The charges are serious. Reports said that he could be benched and yet he got a ticket. There was resent resentment. Leader, Congress leader Sudarshan Nichiappan hit out at the leadership for denying him a ticket from Shivaganga. The party has decided to brazen it out. Soon after the announcement, Karthi Chidambaram said that there was no case against him and that all that are floating around are politically motivated allegations. Exceedingly grateful for the Congress President and to the All India Congress Committee for giving me an opportunity to represent this great party in the Shivaganga constituency. I'm also very grateful to the leader of the alliance in Tamil Nadu Mr. M.K. Stalin, the president of the DMK and the leader of the secular, Democrat, uh, secular front here for allotting the seat to the Congress party. He's free to say what he wants to. After all, we are an independent country and the matter is sub -judice. But to persist with a candidate whose reputation is being questioned shows the Congress party in poor light. Contrast this with Abhishek Singh, son of former Chhattisgarh Chief Minister Raman Singh. Abhishek Singh is a sitting MP from Rajnand Gaon in the state. But the ruling BJP has denied him a ticket. They fielded Santosh Pandey instead. Reason? Corruption. Abhishek Singh was accused of holding undeclared offshore assets. His name also cropped up in the Panama Papers. The decision to bench him is very good messaging by the BJP. The party suffered a drubbing in the assembly election. Hard decisions on candidates with tainted reputations are only going to help the BJP's image. It's a party that acts against corruption, it says. So what does this tale of two sons tell you? It contrasts the approach of two parties. It also compares their political calculations. The Congress, as usual, went with dynasty. P. Chidambaram won for, from Sivaganga many times, and so his son inherits that seat. No questions on performance. Remember, Karthi Chidambaram lost big in 2014, and no questions on the corruption charges against him. The BJP, on the other hand, opted for a clean seat. It is important to win irrespective of who contests, even if that means denying tickets to big shots. Corruption, performance, dynasty. You know who follows which parameters. Today's question, is the Congress party a divided house? Is it Team Priyanka versus Team Rahul? Has the sibling rivalry spilled into politics and who is winning this internal battle. Let's rewind a bit to put it in context. January 2019, this year, Priyanka Gandhi Vadra officially joined politics. This announcement came with much fanfare. It was sold as a game changer, a move to turn the tables in Uttar Pradesh. The announcement was made on the 23rd of January. 23rd of January. Do you know when Priyanka Gandhi Vadra made her first speech? Not that day, not that week, not even that month. It took her nearly two months to deliver her first speech. She was inducted with a roadshow in Lucknow. Again, much publicized, but she wasn't allowed to say a word. It was her brother and party president Rahul Gandhi who held the mic. It was Rahul Gandhi who did the talking. It was Rahul Gandhi who dominated the discourse. At Priyanka Gandhi's induction, it was only Rahul Gandhi who spoke. And that's just one instance. When Priyanka Gandhi hit the campaign trail, she captured the headlines. Her supporters compared her to Indira Gandhi, underscoring the uncanny resemblance with a grandmother. Analysts applauded her political acumen. 
The boat ride from Prayagraj to Varanasi was a campaign done right. She was a natural. She knew how to be one with the people. She did not fumble and struggle like her brother. And as she began to overshadow Rahul Gandhi, another announcement came, announcement of sorts. Priyanka Gandhi Vadra will not contest this election. Rahul Gandhi won, will, and he is the heir apparent. Team Rahul went into overdrive after that. All tricks in the social media book were used to show him as the leader. Sample this. On the Twitter page of the Congress party, the hashtag Rahul for Behtar Bharat, meaning Rahul for a better India, dominates the timeline. Tweets from Rahul Gandhi's personal account are featured prominently. And that isn't the case for Priyanka Gandhi. It took more than a month for her first tweet to be posted. At a time when most political accounts are buzzing with activity, this is a social media election, Priyanka Gandhi's Twitter account barely moves. As of this afternoon, her handle has posted only 13 tweets, one three. Offline too, Team Rahul wants the lion's share of visibility. Rahul Gandhi addresses more rallies. For Priyanka Gandhi, her first rally in Gujarat remains her only one this election, one rally in almost two months. Same with the press conferences. Rahul Gandhi is front and center, the face of all the major press conferences of the Congress party. Priyanka Gandhi has not held a single press conference yet. She was supposed to hold one last month, but it was canceled at the last minute. So basically, Priyanka's role in the Congress campaign so far has been limited to cameos. Her events are covered despite the Congress PR machinery, not because of it. For every move that Rahul Gandhi makes, the media gets repeated alerts. That's not the case with his sister. As more party workers call for a bigger role for Priyanka Gandhi, a sustained effort to limit her role is underway. And these are just the first reports of this infighting. You haven't heard the last of it, or as they say, picture abhi baki hai.